Alright guys, welcome back to another MCRD tutorial. So today what I'm going to be showing you is a crystal block. So basically a block that um, is similar to geodes and the like the purple part. And you can basically mix that in with uh, blocks that are, we have the same mechanics and then you have something that works uh, similar to something like this, uh, which will basically hold all your... Uh, different um, crystal crystal things and stuff like that but uh, with that being said uh, let's go ahead and just place one of these down and we can kind of see how it works so it will slowly um, work at figuring out a random location for the side to place the crystal uh, you can change the delay time for that uh, make it so it's slower if you want to and uh, I've revamped the script a little bit. The only thing that I would consider doing um, is basically going ahead and uh, testing the rotation for these parts, like the crystal blocks themselves, and then basically making a placement condition so it can only be placed on these blocks. Um, that will basically, when it's broken, it will destroy all the other blocks around it, which would probably be useful but it's not really mandatory to do that so I haven't implemented it uh, over time uh, though it will basically grow into other crystals like the other ones shown in here there's uh, I think that's the largest one and then there's a few others that can basically uh, generate so there's like three or so stages I'll just cut back in after a while and I'll kind of show that it's updated and uh, we can take it from there. It takes a while for it to do that because generally geodes take a while so um, I'll cut back in. Alright so from when it was night or turning night I guess I ended up having enough time to get a kind of a shell of a house done but uh, then I noticed that the sun rised and it was roughly around enough time to for it to actually age to the next stage so uh, yeah that's basically the next stage and then from there it will basically do another timer about the same amount of time so probably another day or so it would basically age up to the next stage and then another day or so it would be on the final stage uh, you can adjust that time for it in the uh, procedure itself but uh, I just wanted to kind of showcase that it will uh, update and kind of distribute it based on the uh, the block itself all right, so outside of that, I just, <laughs> I don't know, I was wasting time. I just wanted to build kind of like a house or something here. Um, it was a nice view, so I'm like, yeah, sure, what, whatever, we'll just build a house. But uh, let's go into MCrater and then we'll uh, see the procedures and the, the blocks themselves so we can kind of get an idea of what everything is set up for. All right, so it's broken into three different types of categories. So the item itself, for which it will drop the crystals, those little parts that stick out of the block, and then there is the block itself. So each category has its own little parts. So the procedure for the crystal block is in here, and then the, or pardon me, the crystal, yeah, the crystal block, and then there's the crystals, which the procedure is in this one. And then the item is just the item shard. So we'll start with the item shard first and we'll work away from there. So basic texture and we have just a GUI name. We can put it wherever we want. And then we have no food properties and we don't have any inventory. It doesn't matter if you have one or not, but it's there. And then there's no, or no triggers being used, so no procedures. So that's basically the just a very generic item for actually the drop itself and then we have our crystal block which is a little bit different so let's take a look at the crystal block uh, first and then we'll take a look at the crystal block procedure so in the crystal block uh, we have our texture uh, we don't have a general rotation or anything like that it's just a solid block it doesn't need to be anything fancy under bounding again I've left that as default and then I've given it a glass sound. So basically, uh, this sound will be um, 
sounds like glass when it's broken so basically that will kind of act similar to how crystals break uh, we have a building blocks for the category for it and then everything else pretty much is the same we don't actually drop uh, anything we just uh, actually yeah we don't want this block to drop anything but for the alternate version where you would be mixing in these blocks with that look basically identical you would basically want to drop those ones but not the one that actually spawns the crystals so this is why I have this uh, disabled um, the tool to destroy I have it set to pickaxe and I believe the value for harvest level is set to negative one so I'm not sure why it's set to negative one it must have generated like that when I was upgrading updating the uh, workspace so generally have it set to zero and it should be fine and then you can just basically um, disable that and it should be fine as well and then we have our sound properties so this sounds like glass this acts like glass so it'll be very similar to the mechanics and stuff of glass um, outside of that we have our tick rate set to 20 so every 20 ticks uh, this will basically go ahead and um, update the thing now you can make this uh, shorter in time if you want to by setting it to one this might be a little bit easier to uh, generally make the procedures which we'll be covering in a little bit uh, work a little more efficiently because it will be per tick so if you want to delay it higher though to make it so it's a lot longer then you can set it to 20 if then that will work just fine uh, there is the block color on map. Uh, this was a ice block at one time, but generally um, you want to go with the color that you want to assign it. Now, I believe the block is green, so we could apply it to being green. Everything else, though, is pretty much um, default properties. Uh, we do need NBT uh, for the actual block, so make sure that's enabled. Disable these two checkboxes. <clears throat> and uh, make sure that the slot inventory is set to zero because we don't actually need to use that. So uh, fluid and storage, we don't have anything. The only trigger that we have is under the update tick, so we'll cover that next. So in the update tick for this particular block, uh, we have basically just a random number, which will be basically counting uh, for... I believe, let me just see, go over the script a little bit. Uh, random number equal to, not sure why the random number is 600. Um, delay time, so delay time is, hold on a sec. Yeah, that's what I figured. Um, that particular uh, variable was supposed to be delay time, which would be counting the first timer right here. So I'll fix that in the uh, when I export all the procedures and stuff like that. Make sure to save this. But delay time is basically the uh, time and ticks you want it to basically count down. So it's uh, how long it will delay for. Uh, this will basically be your variable name for what your timer is um, going to be using. So I have a growth timer. And then you want to basically set your stage zero. All the stages are labeled. So you basically want to update it according to the stage number that it is. So this is, again, the first stage. So we would want to put the first stage there. And then basically what's happening is all this other stuff um, basically just calculates uh, the side and all that it will randomly generate a number between one and six which will pick a side and then it will basically spawn a um, crystal on that particular side uh, one thing though uh, is because that was set to the random number uh, it wasn't actually working the way that it should have been so it, all the crystals were basically being placed down on each side so when i fix this it will basically go ahead and uh, make it so that it will go through the cycle of the timer again and then place another random one based on the uh, side there. So it'll try to find a, a spot until it can um, actually place it down. So that's basically that. Uh, there is um, 
nothing really else here you need to know. Generally, you don't even uh, need to actually edit this stuff. So basically all this in that particular one is irrelevant. Everything is controlled through the actual properties right up here. So basically you wanna set your block, your delay time tick and ticks. So all this is labeled, gives you information and your timer name. So you might need to change that if you are using the name for something else uh, for the block or whatever. So you would wanna make sure that it has something for your um, mod that won't have any conflict. So I added support for it. So generally that's that. I'll make sure to save that right now. And then generation properties, we don't have anything for generation, so we don't need it because we're gonna be generating it as a structure. All right, so that's the block one taken care of. Let's go on to the crystals. It's not too much different. So basically we have just our crystal model. Uh, we do have a couple assets. We have the textures for each stage, our block texture, our item texture, and then we have the um, crystals for the models and stuff like that. And they're, I'll provide those in the description, but basically it's just the um, textures for the um, the sides there for the crystal. So I can provide those in the description for you guys, our project files. So with that being said, there's no sounds or anything like that, nothing else being imported. Back to the crystal block. So again, texture, we just have the texture for the basically the particles. We have set our model. Uh, we set the rotation to down, up, north, south, west, east, and we have set it to cut out. Uh, those are the most important settings for this particular page. Bounding box, uh, those you'll have to kind of play around with based on the model, but uh, these are generally the, the sizes that I added. I went to, to 0, 14, 14, 16. So if you want to copy those properties, you can. Uh, the GUI name basically just gave it a general name, uh, Emerald Crystal Zero. And then I've set the uh, properties and stuff like that. We could probably set the properties to glass as well. And then we have it not generate in any particular inventory because we don't want it to actually be shown. Uh, we are dropping one of the actual um, items for this particular thing when it's broken. So that will basically go ahead and drop the emerald shard that we basically created for our item. Uh, we do want to walk through the block, so we have enabled that so we can actually get through the, the hitboxes and stuff like that. Um, as far as the properties, you might want to set the um, dropping properties for tool to destroy for pickaxe and then have the uh, tier for the pickaxe as well as requiring the tool if you want to. Uh, the sound properties are just glass. Advanced, uh, we have it again for the tick. Now you might want to set this to one because it will be basically ticking constantly. We're going to be using a delay for that so you might want to set that to one and all the other properties are basically this, uh, the same as the other one. You just want to set the color on map to green or whatever color that your block is. And then you wanna enable uh, the MBT data. And then make sure that the slot is zero and then these two parts are unchecked. We're just gonna be using it for MBT variables and then energy and f uh, fluid storage we haven't used. And then we have just a update tick for the procedure. So we'll cover that next. So the update tick is pretty very similar to the other one, only basically what this one is doing is it's going to update the stage of the crystal itself. So this is running from the crystal that we first placed down. And what we're doing is we're going to basically select our stages. So stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four. And then we have a couple different things that we can do. So there is a random, uh, chance which will basically go ahead and generate a um, chance for it to like a percentage so 66 will basically be um, if you look down here it basically says if the local um, the basically the timer is equal to or less than the 66 but then we have the 
other one which is random number equal to or greater than random chance so random chance is basically um, the number for the random number is basically going to be from 0 to 100 so it's going to be somewhere randomly between that range and then basically what this will do is it will basically go ahead and um, update if these numbers are um, if the random number is greater than the random chance so uh, sending this to a higher number will make it more rare uh, sending it to a lower number will make it more common and then you have your delay which is your global growth time for your actual time that it will basically go ahead and try doing all this which will um, basically this will just count up constantly until it can reach that particular value and then what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and um, basically try placing down the stage so I'll adapt this a little bit more because I just noticed something that this will continue counting even though it's past the amount so we don't want that to happen it can use memory if it's doing that so I'll make a catch for it and then we can kind of prevent that from happening but uh, basically the only things that you need to worry about is the delay time for the ticks the um, percent that you want it to actually randomly generate at and then your variable for your timer and then your blocks for your stages so that's the only thing that you actually need to configure this whole thing down here is irrelevant so I'll make sure to update that right now and then I'll uh, come back in so it's just a little bit different so I basically just added a if and else statement so basically what it's going to do is if this value is less than the growth time then it's going to increase it by one and then if it is the same or equal to or greater than then what it's going to do is it's going to update the model if these two conditions are met so basically the random number and the um, stage itself so basically if it's depending on the stage and the random number and the ch random chance so that should be a little bit more efficient than the other way that I had it so I'll make sure to save this as well all right so again the only thing that you really actually need to update is the settings up here and everything is controlled down here from those settings so basically everything you need to worry about is that part um, yeah, so that's basically it. Uh, there isn't anything else generation. We haven't generated anything. You'd basically go ahead and build your um, geode with these blocks and then you'd probably end up making another regular block like this. Only this time you wouldn't have the procedure. And uh, one thing I should note is I will provide a additional a place condition for the stages which is under the advanced properties valid placement and then I'll basically create a procedure where you guys can use this if you want to for um, basically going ahead and making sure that the block will break if the, it's not connected to the crystal block uh, this will be optional if you want to use it but um, I'll quickly whip something up so you guys can at least have that so it doesn't just float after but outside of that if you are new to my channel don't forget to subscribe comment down below rate the video and i will see you guys next time thanks for watching peace out